Happy birthday, Canada. You're 150 years young. Hi everyone, it's Steven here for Bland Designs and this is vlog number 25 for Monday, July the 3rd, 2017. So, busy weekend. This was uh, Canada's 150th birthday and you saw in my little teaser at the beginning that I did a tribute page in my art journal to mark the occasion. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in what's pissing me off this week as well. But before we get on to that kind of thing, let's talk about what I've been up to. Yes, I've been doing more acrylic pouring, and you're probably bored to death with this. But I've been doing a lot of experimentation, and you know that I have a series of videos about my experiments, and I'm going to be adding more to those. So if you don't like those, they're all in one playlist, you can ignore them. Um, but I'm finding it really fascinating. The problem is now I'm getting an awful lot of canvases, and I'm not really sure. Sorry about the bump there. I closed my door drawer. Um, I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with all of these. Um, I have a special event coming up that I'm going to talk about a little later, but uh, maybe I will give some of these away. I don't know, or whatever. Actually, just as a side note, I've been thinking lately, you know, I do a lot of things. I make a lot of things, and you can only have so many of these things hanging around your house uh, before they start to pile up. And I'm the kind of person that likes to make things for people, you know, to give as gifts or whatever, if they appreciate it or not. I'm a little shy about giving away some of these things, though, because, you know, what I think, what I like, and what somebody else might like might be two different things. And, you know, I don't want to put somebody into the position where, you know, you give them uh, an original piece of artwork you're really proud of, and they think it's the most disgusting and stupidest thing they've ever seen, but they feel very awkward and they feel, you know, like they have to show their appreciation for this and say nice things about it. Um, and But in the back of their mind, they're basically going, oh my God, if he ever comes over to the house, we'll have to put it out somewhere so he can see it because otherwise we're putting it in the back of the closet with all the other gifts that we've gotten over time and we can't even re-gift it. You know, I go on here. But... Um, Anyways, I'm thinking, you know, maybe what I should do is like my cards and things that I make. Um, maybe I can find a charity or something that can sell them uh, to make some money for their charity. Maybe I could do that. I've thought about trying to sell them myself. But to be honest, I, I don't know if you make that much out of it. And then it becomes, you know, takes the joy out of making something, I think, if you're doing it for money. Um, you know, not that I'm against money. Heaven only knows. But anyways, well, just a thought, back burner. Maybe you have some thoughts about that that you want to share with me. Maybe you can tell me what you do with a lot of the stuff you create. Um, you know, and maybe I'll find an answer there. Anyways, back to what I was going to show you. So this was a real experiment, and I have not put this one. I, I didn't do a video about this one. The reason being is, this was paint that was left over from what I'm going to show you now. I was experimenting with printing on cloth. Barb Owen did a whole thing about using paint to print on uh, cloth. And I found that there's a product that you can get from Golden. You mix it with acrylic paints and it allows you then to uh, use it like a fabric paint and uh, you heat set it by putting it in your dryer or by ironing it and supposedly it'll stand up under washing. Now I wasn't making this for clothing and this is just a piece of muslin that uh, I picked up at Fabricland and I just want to try it. So basically I did the same kind of thing on this as I do in my art journals. There's layers. I first laid down, um, I, I mixed the paints up, the colors that I wanted to use and um, with this uh, textile, what do they call it, textile medium, I think it is, um, mixed it up, painted on background in two colors, then I stenciled, uh, sponged some stenciling work on it, and then I used my art foamy stamps, and I dipped those in acrylic paint and put them on top of this. Um, eh, it's, it's an experiment, it's not the most beautiful piece there is, 
But I thought, well, it's kind of fun. And then I basically did a really primitive hem all the way around it and um, sewed it with a zigzag stitch, I guess it is, or something on my sewing machine. I'm not a really good sewer. I do love my sewing machine, though. Um, it's fun. It's another machine. I love machines. And so I've got this basically placemat. And it sits over on top of an old, old filing cabinet that I have a in basket on top of. And the old filing cabinet tops kind of rust it and that kind of thing. I've often thought about painting it or doing something with it. But for now, it just sits over there on top of that and covers up the rust marks. So it was an interesting experiment. And um, I might try it again. I've got lots of that material left over. Maybe I'll try something again now that I know how that works and see what happens. But that's... I had a lot of paint left over. So... I used it like a pour. And that's how I get it up the right way. And that's how I created this. Now, did I get any cells? No. Um, is this thing going to stand up to the test of time? No idea. I have varnished it. Um, I just think it was pretty. So, it took a long time to dry though, I will say that. And that had to do with the mixture, I guess, of the uh, textile medium with it. But it did eventually dry. And then other things that I've been doing, where's, oh yeah, this I kind of like. This was, first of all, a 6x6 six six panel that I did an acrylic pour on. So this blue you see under here, that was the acrylic pour. But what, um, have I got it up the right way? Yeah, I do. Um, but what I did was I then used those PBO paints that I've shown you before and talked about that react to each other and they create their own cells and things and I just took a bunch of colors and dripped them on here and let them flow and I left it and let it do its own thing. Now these paints of course take about 72 hours to dry so it sat for three four days and I've just put a coat of varnish on it and it's still a little tacky so it needs to set for a little longer but I kind of think it's kind of cool. Very abstracty, so I kind of like that. And you see down here, you can see where the PBO made their own cells and things like that, and they just they just sort of blend together on their own. You just let it sit. It's kind of fun. You just have to put up with the long drying time. That's all. Okay. So what else? Oh yeah. So I, as you saw in my teaser at the beginning, I did an art journal page. It is a tribute page to Canada's 150th birthday. And if you're not from Canada, then that's, we're 150 years old, July the 1st is Canada Day. We used to call it Dominion Day when I was a kid, excuse me, um, because we were basically a colony of the, uh, or part of the British Empire, and uh, we, when we did break away, when we became a full-fledged co country in 1867, um, the date that was picked for that declaration was July the 1st. And so July the 1st is our um, Canada Day. Now we call it Canada Day. We don't call it Dominion Day uh, because we're no longer part of the British Empire. Um, although we still have the Queen. She's still Im sort of important to us. She's symbolic. Uh, that's all. She has no, no power here. But anyways, so I did this spread. Now, it's okay. Um... The, the uh, stylized maple leaf that you see in multiple colors, that's the symbol they were using this year for the 150th. And um, each of the, I think, there's, I think there's 13 pieces in this maple leaf. I count them up. And so I'm assuming that 10 of them represent each of the provinces and three of them represent each of the uh, territories. Um, I think we only have three territories. Now, yeah. Um, so, and of course, the maple leaf has always been our symbol because it's on our flag. And uh, red and white are our colors. So I did the background in red and white. And I did, you can't see it, but you see some of those little bits of color peeking up in here? Well, I started off the page, and I do have a video showing me making this page. Um, I used this stencil. Now, I made this stencil, and it was purely by accident. I wanted to do a Canada page, so I went on to uh, Google Images and looked for this symbol, found it, and I put it through my uh, Cricut machine, I did a print and cut, and after I did the print and cut, the first time I 
didn't realize it was going to cut out each of these little pieces individually. I had to do some alterations to get it to come out in one big piece. But anyways, when it cut it out first time, these little pieces, I thought, that'd make a cool stencil. So I have some of this, it's, it's paper, but it's uh, got a plastic coating on top of it. I don't know where I got it. I found it in my stash. And I thought, well, that would be strong enough to make a stencil. So I blew the design up a little bit bigger and put it through the Cricut, and lo and behold, I got a stencil. That worked out very nicely. So I'm going to talk a little bit about stencil making a little later on in this video as well, but this was kind of cool. And the reason it's got this all over it is because I don't wipe off my stencils, and that's uh, Distress Oxide ink, which is what I used on the page. So if you're interested in how I did that page, as I said, it's not really artistic in terms of what art journal pages often are like. It's more scrapbookish, but my whole purpose was to basically um, just do something in as a remembrance piece of Canada's 150th birthday. And so I did. And speaking of the art journal, too, I've now filled my art journal. Well, I think there's one page left at the back, but I don't know if I'm going to do anything with that. This is when I first got into art journaling, this is the journal that I was using. It's now done. So I'm going to do a video, sort of a flip through this. And what I'm hoping to determine when I do that flip through is to see what my evolution has been since I first started art journaling and where I'm at today. Um, so watch for that. I will do that maybe later this week and I'll get that up. Um, it might be kind of fun. I'm going to basically be my own critic. I'm going to pull myself apart on this. Better that I'm my own critic first before other people become my critic. Um, I can hurt my own feelings. I don't want somebody else hurting my feelings. Okay, so that went on for a while. What do we want to talk about now? Next. Oh, yeah. YouTube channel of the week. This week's YouTube channel is AppleLover53. I have been on this site uh, for quite a while, for several years, and uh, she has been doing this site for even more time than I've been on it. And I have found her extremely useful uh, in showing you how to make the most out of your uh, cutting machine. She primarily does Brother Scan and Cut, but many of the things that she does on Brother Scan and Cut you can do or adapt to whatever electronic cutting machine you have. She does show you, though, a lot of unique ways of using your electronic cutting machine for making cards, doing scrapbook pages, and things like that. She also is very knowledgeable about a program called Inkscape. Inkscape is a graphic uh, program. It's like Photoshop, but it uh, does a lot of things that are easier to do in it than they are in Photoshop and allow you to create SVG files and other files that you can use on your uh, electronic cutting machine. So she is a wealth of knowledge. Um, her videos are very professionally done and very clear and she's very inspiring as well. Um, so you're going to get more use out of your electronic cutting machine if you watch her videos and that's Apple Lover 53. So as I've said, that is a very useful uh, YouTube channel, especially if you have an electronic cutting machine. And it doesn't matter which one you have, whether you have a Brother Scanning Cut, a Cricut, a Silhouette, whatever, a Cameo. Um, even though she's more machine specific, her ideas and techniques, I think, are adaptable to any other machines that are out there. All right, so what's pissing me off this week? Well, it's not really that I'm pissed off at this. I'm just getting tired of t listening to people complain about Canadians not being very patriotic. Okay, first of all, the word patriotic to me immediately sets up uh, the Stars and Stripes, uh, the Americans, July 4th, uh, their Independence Day, rah rah rah, parties, barbecues, the whole bit, because the Americans really go all out on their Independence Day. Um, they're equivalent to our Canada Day. For the most part, yes, Canadians are very patriotic. We're very low-key about it. Now, I saw a newscaster going on uh, about how he thought that we were doing a disservice to our country, that we weren't out there flying our flags, and 
you know, getting right into the rah, rah, rah and the whole bit. And he couldn't understand why we were like that. And he was actually basically accusing us Canadians of being um, very complacent about our role in history, about our country, that kind of stuff. No, we're not. I think what we are is probably modest and humble. We're Canadians. We're thankful that we're Canadians. I know I am. Uh, best country in the world, as far as I'm concerned, to live in. And I've visited many countries in this world. I mean, if I had to move out of this country for some reason, the only other place I would really want to even consider living is possibly Australia. And you know why, because I'm sort of in love with Australia these days. Um, but really, this country is very free. Um, we invite anybody in the world, basically, to come and, and live here. Maybe that's one of the problems. Maybe our country, our country is still very new in many ways. I mean, we're only 150 years old. Um, we're still developing. We have vast amount of, of land, physical land, that's unsettled, that there's nothing there. Um, I mean, we are the second largest land mass country in the world. And we only have a population of about 34 million people compared to the United States, which is a smaller land mass, but has 330 or more million, 10 times our population. Um, also, we're a new country in terms of who are we as Canadians, really? Um, I was born here and I'm about a fifth generation Canadian, um, but Everybody had to come from somewhere. I'm not a native person. I'm not an indigenous person. I don't have any roots there. Um, so does that make me more Canadian than, say, people who come here um, and chose this country to settle in? I'm not sure. I don't think it makes me any more Canadian. Um, I think what a Canadian is, and this is what we should be patriotic about, is a Canadian is the kind of person, I think, who's a really good neighbor and friend to everybody else in the world as a nation. And we are. We're peacekeepers. Um, we should be proud of that. Uh, we um, believe in human rights. We support human rights. Uh, we, do, uh, we allow people into this country to come here from war-torn countries. Uh, we allow them to maintain their cultural heritage to maintain their religious beliefs and ways of worshiping. Um, yeah, we've got a lot to be patriotic about in this country. We're a great country. I mean, look at the number of people who've been trying to sneak across our border from the States after Trump got in, especially when he started putting his band on, you know, other countries coming into the United States. Um, it's actually kind of funny if you think about it. We have the longest, the, the, what do they call it? The longest, I guess the longest, uh, undefended border in the world with the United States. And uh, they were showing on television one day these people who were sneaking in uh, down in the western provinces at uh, across the border. And there were the RCMP standing there. And the RCMP weren't arresting them. They were giving them directions, telling them what they needed to do now that they had come into our country illegally. They didn't pull out their guns. They didn't put them in handcuffs. If that had been the United States, yeah, they would have put them in handcuffs. They would have trotted them off. Here we go. Yeah, come on in. Uh, the Timmies is down the road. Go in, have a double double. Okay. Um, so I guess we're like that. Now, having said all that, though, Something that I found that was was bothering me. Ottawa, of course, if you're not from Canada, you know that is our capital city. Our houses of parliament are there. And they were having a big bash. Well, they were showing the security this year because they were afraid of terrorists. You know, I, I think back to 1967. I was 10 years old. And that was our centennial, 100 years. And I, how times have changed. Um, there was no security. Everybody was having a good time. Um, but it was a different day and age. Now, in Ottawa, they said they were only going to let so many people onto Parliament Hill. They had all kinds of security. They had 
all kinds of uh, law enforcement uh, people, police, R RCMP, everything there. They had scanners. You weren't allowed to take anything with you on the hill, basically, except the clothes on your back. You weren't even allowed to take an umbrella. So we have become, like the rest of the world, paranoid. And that's sad. Um, that's really sad. Um, but I, I don't know. That's just the way the times have changed. Uh, I don't think we had any problems. I haven't really watched the news in a couple of days, but I haven't seen anything on the Internet stating that there was any terrorist acts, that they blew up Parliament Hill or anything like that, or shot our Prime Minister. So that's a good thing. And I think that's something we, we should be happy about as Canadians and patriotic about, too. That we could have an event like that, and even though we increased the security in the whole bit, it still was a pleasant time for people. And that's a good thing. So, are what am I pissed off that we're not very patriotic? We are very patriotic. We just don't get out there and wave the flag and shout and holler to the world the whole bit. We know who we are. We know what we are. And we're proud of it. Simple as that. Okay. And that. So, what about uh, what I was going to talk about today? Okay. I want to go back to the art journal page that I showed you that I did for Canada and my stencil. And you know, if you have an electronic cutting machine, it is very easy to make stencils. And there are tons and tons of YouTube videos out there that will show you how to do this. Even if you don't have an electronic cutting machine, take a look at your supplies of, of punches and dies. You can actually make stencils using those. Um, and again, you will find videos on YouTube. Just look under uh, stencil making and you'll find lots of them. On my own channel, I did a, a uh, a video about how to cut a stencil many years ago and I did it on one of my older Cricut machines I had at that time and that I think I think I've had the most views out of all of my videos I think I've got something like over 25 or over 5,000 or something like that or maybe it's 52,000 I don't know it's a huge number on that particular video go figure so I guess a lot of people want to make their own stencils but really they're easy to do and you can make them out of a variety of materials. I mean, if you want it to last, you can um, get a piece of acetate. Um, you can buy stencil material um, at Walmart, actually, or Staples or someplace like that. And that'll last you forever. Um, what I did there was I just cut it out of a piece of uh, plasticized paper, UPO paper. You could do it out of UPO paper. Um, so there's lots of things you can do. The beauty of cutting your own stencil is you can customize it. You can make a stencil for exactly, like I did there, for exactly what I, I want to do. Um, so, give it a try. You know, check for some videos and things like that. It's also more cost effective as well. Stencils can be expensive. And, like I said, you can customize them. Doesn't take a lot of, of expensive material to make them. Okay, other new stuff I've got. Well, um... In my last couple of acrylic pouring videos, you will notice that I have been using two cameras. I decided it was very awkward to do my uh, videos, like when the acrylic pouring ones, on my main workbench. Because um, the way the camera situated on that, it didn't give me a lot of room, especially for ones that involved like spin pouring and things like that. So I have another work area. And again, you can see these work areas on the video that I did when I redesigned my craft room. And that's where I do most of my uh, paint-related projects. So I thought, I've got another webcam. I could run it over there easy enough. So I did. And it was working out okay, but the webcam that I was using was a really old one. So the quality of the sound, the quality of the picture was not very good. So I decided to go out and get another webcam. And they happen to have the same webcam that I use for my major videos on sale, $30 off. Um, it's not top of the line one anymore, but it does my, it makes decent videos. And so I've got that and I've got it hooked up over in that area and I can switch between the two cameras on the computer that they're plugged into. And it gives me another area for, you know, 
working out on things uh, for my videos. So anyways, you'll notice that in some of my upcoming videos um, that I'm using two different cameras. I would still though really like to see and I wish people would do this. I, I wish people like Barb Owen, Mike Deacon, well Mike Deacon actually did do it, um, but some of the other YouTubers out there that you know really make great videos um, you know they spend a lot of time doing editing and thing but they have multiple cameras and I'd like to see what their setup is how do they do that I know with Barb Owen she seems to, she just she must have a program on her computer she's probably using a Mac I find that a lot of people that are making their YouTube videos they use a Mac for their editing uh, software and apparently making a video on a Mac is really easy um, I'm still playing with the idea of actually getting one someday, but they're expensive. And for what I would want, it's probably going to cost around $5,000. So that's a lot of money. Um, I also don't really do a lot, of it, uh, a lot of editing of my videos, as you know. Um, what you see is what you get. Uh, I cut in a few things on these vlogs, but that's very simple. Other people put little titles and all kinds of things all over, uh, special sound effects and stuff like that. That takes a lot of time. That's a, lots of hours. And I'd rather spend that time creating my art than working on making television quality videos. Okay, that's just me. Um, but I would really like to see how other people do it because I know, like I said, Barb just pushes a couple of buttons that you don't see and she can switch camera suddenly goes from her face down to the project and then she has picture in picture as well so that has to do with the software I'm sure um, well maybe someday I'll get to that level I'm not sure but anyways I'd like to see those videos so Barb if you're watching this this week and she does sometimes um, do a video on how you do a video I'd love to see it all right so what else? Well, what we did over the weekend, we went uh, to the Canada Day celebrations in Coburg, which is a place about 45 minutes uh, east of us. Um, we go every year because they have a huge, huge artisan vendor sort of um, like booths. Um, it's done by the Rotary Club. They charge you an, uh, five bucks to get in and they have all kinds of stuff there and it's really neat to look around at what people are doing. There's a lot of art, there's a lot of jewelry. In fact, I found this year there was not as much art art as there was jewelry, which is art in itself, jewelry making. But because I've recently become interested in wire wrapping and that kind of thing, um, I found that somewhat interesting too. And I got some ideas for some mixed media things and whatnot, and that's really why I go. I seldom buy anything when I'm there. Um, I usually uh, just, you know, look and get ideas, take a few pictures of things and stuff like that. Uh, while we were there, we decided to go into the beer garden and have a couple of beers and some french fries. Well, this these french fries were horrible. Um, the people that were making them didn't even have a sign up on how much things cost. And I guess, I don't think they spoke, they must have been new immigrants to our country because... Uh, Walter asked the guy what the difference was, um, or how big a large was of the fries, and the guy says seven dollars. No, how large are they? What's the quantity? You know, you have two sizes. You have small. You have large. How much bigger is a large compared to a small? Um, because basically, the small was six dollars, the large was seven dollars. So you know. Um, more bang for your buck, you know, if you buy the large one maybe, but you just want to see what the difference was. Now they're seven dollars. Okay, so Walter got the large. I think the French fries had been cooked in 10W40 oil though. They were pretty greasy and pretty overcooked. And I think I've got, I have a little video of the day in Coburg um, that I'm going to insert here in a moment. And so you can check that out and just see what the whole day was like. And I've got a shot of those french fries. Anyways, it was fun. Um, we weren't there all that long, but there was a ton of people. And there was even a parade. Um, we didn't know that. We kind of stumbled upon the parade uh, as well, which was kind of reminiscent of something that in 1967, when I was 10 years old, I was in, uh, we lived in a little town then uh, as a kid. Um, 
actually north of Coburg at the time, and they had this big parade and a little town. I'm saying a, a little town of about 1,100 people, and I remember being in the parade because one of the organizers of the parade were standing on the side of the road waiting for it to happen. Said, "Do you want to be in the parade?" I said, "Sure." So they loaded. They had this little train, you know, on wheels. It was supposed to be a train kind of a thing. Um, so they loaded all the local kids up onto that, and we we're all sitting there waving away at everybody. Oh, it was a simpler time. And boy, am I sounding like an old man now. Um, so I'm going to insert here the footage that I took of Canada Day in Coburg. Okay, this is Canada Day 150, and this is Coburg, and this is the waterfront, and they have this every year, and we're about to head over there to the Rotary Club, this is where all the artisans are and everything like that, and all kinds of things that you can buy. This is interesting. So down here, and you can see all the uh, artisans. They have clothing, jewelry, painting, food, you know, gourmet dips, things like that. This is mustard here, I think. All kinds of interesting things. So you can see there are rows upon rows of vendors. This is just one section of it. This is another section here. And there's Walter looking excited about the whole thing. Say happy Canada Day. Happy Canada Day. That's thrilling. Yes, you can see the enthusiasm. Just for so one of the things we like when we come here is to get these cookies. These are gourmet uh, shortbreads. They're really, really good. And you can see we stocked up. I think it's four bucks for 20. We got about eight boxes. And this is pretty much the only place you can get them unless you order them online. And some more of the vendors. So it goes on for days. Canada Day B with our, our national food. I had big intentions to have a studio when my aunt moved out in the room, but Hoppy's in there. So of course they have a beer garden area, and that's they're just going off to get a couple of beers and some fries right now. A little protected area under the trees. It looks like it's going to rain, but that's not anything unusual this week because it's been raining all week. So I'm just sitting here keeping the table while Walter goes and gets the beer, and there's our big haul of cookies. <laughs> Here comes Walter with the beer, and these are the fries. Apparently they have a problem with salt. It all comes out in a big block. I guess it's not the kind of salt that when it rains it pours. It's not warm. Well, not only that, the guy didn't speak English very well. Oh, okay. Well, this is Canada. I got a Canada time. And this is the Midway. Lots of junk food down here. Right now, I'm filled with those greasy french fries and the beer. I think I could hurl. I'll have to do a little editing there. But anyways, this is the marina. All on the waterfront down here. And right now, the weather's being fairly cooperative. So, that's the Goldberg Waterfest. The Waterfront Festival on Canada Day 150, July the 1st, 2017. And so you got a little bit of an idea of the kind of a thing that they have uh, down in Coburg. And it's a waterfront festival, they call it, and they have it every year, and we go every year. It's kind of fun. It's kind of neat. Um, okay, so what's coming up? Um, well, I have a friend's birthday party. It's a surprise birthday party, I think. Well, maybe it's not a surprise birthday party. I've got a lot of birthday parties this year. 
Everybody's hitting milestones. Again, another thing that makes you feel old is when your friends are celebrating milestone birthdays as well. So anyways, that's coming up on Saturday. And I'm still doing some things, planning for my big birthday bash, my 60th. That's coming up in two weeks' time. And I'll be sure to take some video of that and show you the whole thing. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's kind of sad when you throw your own birthday party. Not. I mean, I don't like surprises. And I like things a certain way, organized and whatnot. So, best way. And it's fun because we're going to do games. And we're going to... I just want everybody to have a really good time. Okay? Um, so that's what I've got planned coming up. All right, so nothing else really coming up in this week, uh, but I do want to know some things. A lot of you have been writing comments on under some of my uh, videos, and you've been really helpful. Um, I read everybody's comment. I don't respond always to every one of them. Um, I do appreciate the comments, though. And really, I appreciate the comments that share additional information with me about something or um, I'm having a problem with something and you have a solution or you have a suggestion I really appreciate constructive criticism um, and that's great so here's something else if you wouldn't mind uh, after you've seen this video commenting put a comment down below um, I'm looking for suggestions for future videos now I don't mean vlogs I mean actual videos is there something you want me to try, an experiment you want me to do in, you know, card making, scrapbooking, die cutting, whatever? Um, just leave your, your suggestion below. And if I haven't already done a video about that kind of thing, then I'll give it a shot if I can. If I've got the stuff, then I can do it. Because I like to experiment. You know that. So, sure, please uh, let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. And I'll try to accommodate. Okay, so that's the, the week. That's the vlog for today. And I hope you have a good week. Um, I hope it stops raining and we get some summer weather. I'd really like some hot weather. We only get two months of basically summer in this country. And just every day, it's become the norm. Like, oh, when's it going to start raining today? Um, although everything's looking really green. That's nice. But I'd like a few dry days anyways. Oh, well. Nothing to do about the weather. Okay. Talk to you next Monday. Bye-bye.